Hi, my name is Brent Salzgeber, and I'm a pastor here at Paxton United Methodist Church, and it's a joy that we are able to worship together. I don't know where you are, I don't know what time of the day it is, but we know that whenever we are together, God shows up. Now, we know that our worship is a little bit different. Uh, there are times that we invite you throughout the service to hit stop uh, so that you can uh, pray with those around you uh, or whoever you're with. Uh, we also encourage you, if you have questions or want to talk about something, to hit the stop button. That's one of the neat things about uh, the way we're worshiping now is that you get to really dive into what's going on. We also invite you to add some of the music that Bob has added or some of the music that uh, you um, may feel God the most with. Uh, we invite you to uh, add that into the worship as well. We are so grateful that you were here, and we are tired, for some of us, of not being able to worship together. Um, and we are going to hopefully continue the option of worshiping online, and hopefully soon we'll be able to start worshiping together for those who are comfortable with it. Um, but the time isn't yet. Uh, so with that in mind, let us continue uh, to worship wherever we are at uh, with our call to worship. And we'll do that this day. I'll begin. And when my hands are raised, I just invite you to repeat after me. Come, let us praise the Lord. We praise God with our whole heart. God's works are great. Open our hearts and spirits to see your works, O Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord who has saved us. May our lives reflect the wondrous love of God that all may see and know of God's greatness. Amen. Let us pray. Open our hearts and spirits this day, O Lord, to hear the great good news of your power and presence. Fill our hearts with rejoicing as the words are proclaimed in song and story. Enliven us and remind us that you are with us through the pillar of fire, through the magnificent words of the prophets, through the ministry and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first Old Testament reading comes to us from Psalms, and it's Psalm 181. Praise the Lord, I will extol the Lord with all my heart. In the great council of the upright and the assembly, great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Our next reading comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now about food sacrificed to idols, we know that we all possess knowledge. But knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father with whom all things came and whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still accustomed to idols, that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We, who, we are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that you exercise 
that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. And for if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. We now have the joy of coming together as a people of God and lifting up our joys and our concerns. And I'll begin with a prayer, and then there'll be a time of silence. And we invite you to hit stop and spend some time with whoever you are with. Or if you're just uh, alone, spend some time lifting up your joys and your concerns. Let us now go to God. Almighty God, we want to praise you. So we splash your words on screens on a wall with brightly colored and powerful images. We shout your praises with hands held high. We teach and preach your word, but we don't listen carefully for you. We're so busy trying to shout above the noise of the day that we don't take time to really listen and know you. The voices of the prophets spoke to people long ago who were too busy and anxious to hear. Their words streamed in the winds of time and have come to us. We need to pay attention to your message offered through them. You are our God, the God of all creation, the God of power and love whose mercy is offered to us. In Jesus' time, he proclaimed the good news through, the, through words and actions, reaching out to those who were troubled, alienated, cast aside. He offered healing and hope to, others, to those others turned away. Help us to learn that you alone can heal us and fix to those areas in our lives that are wounded and twisted. Lord, you know all of those areas. You know all of those parts in our lives. So, Lord, now we come to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we, your children, never pray alone, but only with all your saints in all the world. Therefore, we pray just as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes to us from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to 56. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of them. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day for this opportunity to worship in a way that is still new and uncomfortable for some and for others is a way in which we feel you more wholly. Lord, our days are so busy and give us this time to hear your word. Speak to us in whatever way we need to hear it. Lord, take away my words and replace them with yours. Take away me and replace me with you. We ask this all in your name we pray. Amen. So last week we talked about those around us. Uh, We had talked about really the group and what does that look like. And what does it look like for us in the people that uh, we are around, we hang out with, are in our community that we work with, uh, those people that we bring into our lives, how well do they help us align our will with God's? Do they make us better us's? 
uh, in whatever that looks like. And, and I talked about the idea that, that I had some friends that weren't helping me to be the person God called me to be. Um, and we talked about those ways. And one of the ways I found out that was that I realized that God was calling me to be a good father, uh, to be a good co-parent, to be a good son, brother, uh, boyfriend. You go all down my, my list that I made, and I realized that when people take me out of that line, it takes me out of my alignment with God. And we looked um, outside, but today we look inside. We end this kind of two-week uh, sermon on those around us and those inside us uh, with this idea that we don't always get it right. In our scripture, we hear a story of the disciples, and Jesus was going to be crucified. He was going to Jerusalem, and they went to a city to prepare for him, and they weren't having it. It didn't end well, and we, we don't hear you know, exactly what happened in this Luke verse, uh, but it was enough that they had to go. Not, not a single person would have them. And they leave, and in this, the disciples say something. And for me, the first time I read this, I went, that's really weird. Uh, they asked Jesus, can we rain fire down on them? And, and this is what happened in the Old Testament. So it was a prophet that they knew and they wanted revenge. They wanted vengeance. They wanted payback. And as they wanted this payback, Jesus looks at him and goes, are you dumb? Have you not been hearing anything that I've been saying? We get this idea that, that even the disciples, even those that were in Jesus' presence mess it up. So of course we are going to mess it up. There are times in our lives where we will make huge mistakes and we will make little mistakes. I don't know why I remember this. I don't even remember who, maybe it was Teddy. When we lived in Wellsboro, I was very, very young. It wasn't even first grade. But I remember a day when I was at my friend's house uh, and he lived kind of across the street. And, and as we were there, uh, Teddy and I made a mistake. We, we were playing and we weren't sure what to do and they said to clean up and we stuffed crayons in his shorts to move them from one room to another. And apparently we forgot one of them. I didn't know how fun it was to get crayon out of pants until that day. Now we weren't forced to do it, but I just remember getting yelled at by Teddy's grandmother. And as we were getting yelled at, we both apologized, and it was just a little thing. And from that day on, I realized, you know what, I'm not going to ruin someone's dryer by putting a crayon in it. We're always going to have little mistakes. Uh, they're going to be there. And, and one of the great things about today is when we stop and look and go, how well am I being the person that God called me to be? It's those little mistakes that we can easily make up for. That quick text, you know what, I'm really sorry I was a jerk today. Uh, maybe it's a thank you card, maybe it's doing something that we normally don't do. Whatever it is, we know those little things and we know what God calls us to do. Because God calls us not only to go out and to say I'm sorry, but to make amends. And that's what it means when you repent. Not only do you turn away from what you're doing, but you help so that it doesn't happen again. You know, we're seeing some of the big amends in our lives, and we see them all over the place. And, and the hard part is we live in a society that loves to watch people fall. And that's not what today's about. Today's about what are the little, but also those big things that need to be changed. That need to be more reflective of God in our own lives. And, and one of the things that's interesting about this is, is people will ask me, well, how do I know what it is? And the funny thing is, this is one of those things that the Holy Spirit works through your gut. You know because it's not going to be fun. You know because it's always been that thing in your side. You know because the Holy Spirit pushes you. 
And that goes from little things to big things. One of the great things about the disciples is that it doesn't end there. Jesus doesn't tell us that when we mess up and when our alignment goes out of whack, Jesus doesn't say, you know what, you get one chance. Jesus says, it's okay. You, know, you made that little mistake. You kept using that word or phrase that was not of me. Okay. And then we as Christians go, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's the part of repentance. It's that change in us. And we never do it alone. That's what we get from this. You know, Jesus also doesn't leave the disciples. Jesus stays with us amidst our mistakes, even when we don't want to look at ourselves. Jesus looks at us and says, I love you. Come back in line with me. So today, as we go through this time of med meditation, I encourage you, to struggle with what you need to do in your life to fit that alignment with God. You have the support around you to make that change. You know it's not going to be done alone. And even for the medium or big ones that, that are hard, one of the great things is that you know, we aren't alone. Even during this pandemic, we found ways to incorporate ourselves in, in each other's lives. Um, so even through those changes, recognize that God is still at work around you. I invite you now to go to God with all of your mistakes, all of those things that have taken you out of alignment with God. Go with the strength of knowing as we go to God that no matter what you decide, Christ is there, never leaving us. Never saying you've done too much, you are too bad. With that love and that grace, let us now go to God. Brothers and sisters, go into this day filled with the Holy Spirit. Go into this day knowing that there is nothing you can do to take you out of God's love. Go forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.